as a family of 10, we go through a lot of food around here. I'm gonna share with you what we are cooking on this particular spring day here in our farmhouse. For those of you who have chickens for many years or who have had chickens for many years, you may know that you need to replace your chickens or get new chicks every year or every couple of years in order to stay in eggs because as the older ones age, they lay less and less and it takes a while for the younger ones to start laying usually about, I don't know, it depends on the breed, but I usually find they don't start laying really well until the year after you get them. So we hadn't gotten chickens for about two years. And last year I decided that in order to stay in eggs, we should definitely get chicks. Well, I might've gone a bit overboard. It was kind of hard to find them at that time. I had to look on several different websites. They were all out of stock at our local feed store and tractor supply and Orsland and all that good stuff. And so I found some online and I felt like, wow, this was hard to actually find these. I better get a bunch. Well, now a year later, we have so many eggs that we are just trying hard to cook everything that has eggs in it in large quantities in order to not get completely backed up with them. We are giving them to, them to some friends and family, but in my family, one of my sisters also has a bunch of chickens and so we don't all need eggs. What I'm making today to alleviate this problem is my sourdough crepes. They're really simple. I do 18 eggs, two cups of sourdough starter. I fed this sourdough starter last night, so it's bubbly and active. It can also be discard. A cup and a half of milk, a pinch of salt, half teaspoon of salt. There's an actual recipe over on farmhouseonboon.com. If you go over there, search sourdough crepes, you can find it. But I just kind of do this from memory. I actually throw in a few extra eggs. So I think the recipe might call for eight eggs. So doubling it would be 16. I put in 18, but then otherwise double the recipe. Anyways, I am just trying to use up as many eggs as possible. And this is about the only way that I can get 18 eggs down for my family in one meal. Some days that doesn't happen and we'll have leftovers, but some days we will get through all of them, which is great. Oh, I forgot to mention a cup and a half of milk. Did I say that? So it's eggs, starter, salt, and milk, and then some melted butter. I think I say three tablespoons in the blog post. I do about six tablespoons here in this double recipe. Now I am using my nonstick skillet from Maiden. I don't use nonstick much. In fact, this is the only nonstick pan that I have, but I really like using it for crepes because I can keep it at high heat and they turn really easily and not have to like, like with the cast iron skillet, I find I have to kind of baby it. Like I turn it on high and I turn it off for a while and over in order for it to not get overheated. Whereas with this nonstick, I can just leave it on high the whole time and just bust through these crepes so darn fast, which is really great for our busy morning. Now I like to fill it with homemade cream cheese whipped cream topping and maple syrup. But I find that when we do that, we don't eat quite as many of them and then I can't get through the eggs, which is the whole point of this. So I am just making a berry syrup. My daughter likes to do this. She just puts frozen berries in a little saucepan, cooks them down and then blends them with the immersion blender or just leaves them thick. I like to put it on half of it, fold it over and then fold it in fourths, makes it kind of fancy. And then top it with a little bit of powdered sugar. And that's the breakfast, simple and easy. And now we need to go out and do morning farm chores and gather even more eggs.
Before we get back to work in the kitchen, I want to share with you something that we have been loving in our home, and that is Haya Vitamins. So although here in our farmhouse, we do cook from scratch, we do have our little homestead where we try to do everything in a healthy way, like raise our own chickens, we source raw milk and good meat. We do still, of course, have events that we go to. I let my kids on vacation. We got all the cereal. We have compromises. We don't live 100% always from scratch, and I don't always have the mental bandwidth to worry about all of the gaps that might exist in their diets, whether that's from the soil that our food is grown in or the things that they enjoy putting in their bodies that aren't always the best for them. Haya Vitamins help to put my mind at ease because they make these high quality vitamins that contain the essential vitamins and nutrients that kids need to develop and grow. They don't contain any gummy junk, no added sugar. A lot of vitamins today on the market are basically just candy in disguise, but that is not the case with Haya, and even still, my kids absolutely love taking them. Haya vitamins are non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free. They are designed by nutritional experts to fill in the most common gaps. They are pressed from organic fruits and vegetables and are supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including folate, B12, C, zinc, vitamin D, all contributing to immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Haya is designed for kids ages two and up and sent straight to your door in a package families love so parents can have one less thing to worry about. Haya is offering Farmhouse on Boone viewers 50% off your first month by using my link, hayahealth.com forward slash boone50. It'll also be linked in the description box below. Back in the kitchen, I'm going to feed my sourdough starter with some whole grain flour so that we can have a pizza night tonight. This is one of my easy go-to meals and all you need for it is some sourdough starter. Now, I like to make sure that it's been fermenting for a while so that it's nice and digestible. It helps with all of the gut health when it comes to whole grain flours or any kind of flour for that matter. So I'm gonna put this on my stove, which is the warm spot in my kitchen, allow it to ferment until it's this evening and I can make pizza with it. I did make some bread yesterday. I did all the stretch and folds and the bulk ferment, and then I put them into the bannetons. And now after sitting in the fridge all night, they are ready to be baked. So I have my cast iron Dutch oven preheating in the oven. I will just score it, get it in there with the lid off for half the bake time, then with the lid, nope, backwards the lid on for half the big time and then the lid off this exact recipe is over on farmhousehomemoon.com just like everything the one that i like to use the most is called the no need recipe i usually do about half and half whole grain and all purpose so i adapt the recipe in order to include more whole grain In keeping with the mission of using up tons of eggs, I'm gonna get some hard boiled that makes for some quick and easy snacks. I'm gonna set these aside for later and in the afternoon whenever it's after lunchtime and some of the little ones are down for nap, I'm gonna maybe make them into some hard boiled eggs with homemade mayo.
For lunch today, I am doing pork chops, pan fried and butter. So first I am dredging them, I guess you'd call it dredging, in salt and flour. I got some butter going here in the skillet and then I'm just cooking them on both sides until they're nice and brown. I am anticipating some questions I might get about why I am making something like fried pork chops with mashed potatoes and a mushroom cream sauce and green beans for lunch and pizza for dinner. This has something to do with my meal planning technique. Can we call it a technique or lack thereof? So essentially the way that I operate in my kitchen is on rhythms and not so much a specific plan. This is my personality. I don't like having to be married to a plan. It feels more stressful for me to have to work backwards at every meal time. So if I want to have pork chops for dinner, I need to have them thawed at this certain time. Or if I want to have bread with lunch, I need to start my bread Wednesday afternoon in order to have it ready Friday morning. If I want sourdough pizza, I need to feed my starter at this time. Instead, the way that I typically do things in my kitchen is I get a whole bunch of meat in the refrigerator to thaw. And then whenever it's time to make a meal, I look in there, see what's thawed, see what vegetables I have, and then make something from that. So I kind of work on get, making sure there's always options and then pulling from those options and not really knowing going into the day what I'm making, except for that there are options. So at some point I will feed my starter when it's bubbly and active, I'll make crepes, you know, in the morning and then I'll feed it again and that, that will yield a bubbly and active starter for dinner. But I don't really know what I'm going to do. I just make sure that we always have things going. There's meat thawed. There's a pantry stocked. There is a fridge stock with root vegetables. There is a sourdough starter going. There's always bread in some stage. So whether it's in the bulk ferment or it's in the fridge, I just try to keep things going and let the chips fall where they may. So the bread will be ready when it's ready. If I start stretching and folding it at nine o'clock at night, then it needs to do its bulk ferment in a cooler place so that it's ready to do its second rise in the morning. If I start it in the morning, then I can accelerate that process and get it into the fridge that night. I don't worry about when I start it. I think that's when people first start doing something like sourdough, the timing can really worry them because they think, well, what if you know I'm at this step and it's the middle of the night? You always either just put it in the fridge or put it, you know, you don't worry about that whenever you start. You just see where you are at a certain stage and then move on with that information. So you either can put it in the fridge, pause it, or just put it somewhere warm, accelerate it, bake it. It's so much more flexible than people think. And that's how I operate in my kitchen. I just stay on these rhythms, keep things stocked enough, keep things going so that there's just always something to make, even if it's not what you would normally make for lunch or you would normally make for dinner. We're here all the time. We homeschool, we work from home. So it doesn't matter. We can eat pork chops for lunch with mashed potatoes and herb butter and a little cream sauce. And I didn't have that plan going into today. I looked in my fridge, I saw we had mushrooms, I saw we had lots of cream, I had thought out pork chops and no other meat. So that's what's going for dinner is pizza because I need to get more meat thawing and also trying to use a lot of eggs up. So I'm trying to maybe make that as like the protein for a lot of meals. So anyways, it was just obvious when I looked in the fridge at what I needed to make. Now I'm gonna make up some deviled eggs. This is Again, not a recipe I really follow. And that's also an encouragement to you. Once you get really comfortable with ingredients in your kitchen, with making basic stuff, you can just whip things up without having to stop, look at a recipe. I think that's what makes cooking from scratch feel so overwhelming is not knowing the how. I was talking to a friend at church and she was saying that she really wants to get into sourdough but she doesn't really know how yet. And so it's overwhelming, but she does make bread and her bread machine with yeast. And I told her that for me, that would be overwhelming because at this exact moment, I don't know that recipe. I don't know that process. And so it's, it's not so much what it is. It's just the learning it and getting used to it. And then all of it's easy. So with all that being said, for these eggs, I am making up a homemade mayo, or I already did make it up here, by putting an egg into a wide mouth jar. I add a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of salt, mustard. I don't measure anymore. I really find that you can't mess this up. 
it, it always turns out if I don't put the right ratios in, then drizzle some oil over the top. I used to always measure the oil. Now I just pour in enough oil and it will emulsify. Now, if it does not, you can just pour the not thickened mixture, even with the egg over top of another egg and then it'll emulsify. So that is a trick I found whenever one time it didn't work for me and I didn't want to waste it. I use the liquidy uh, portion of, of the recipe that didn't work, pour it back over another egg and it works. So you just put your immersion blender down in there with the egg, let it thicken and then pull it up through the oil mixture. And that's what makes that thick mayo. I add that and some mustard and some salt to egg yolks and then pipe it into the whites with a Ziploc bag with the tip cut off. Now for these pizzas, I know I'm moving through all of this really quickly, but you've seen me, if you follow this channel, make these pizzas a thousand times. This time they're a little bit darker because they are whole grain, but it works out just as well. You can spread sourdough starter into a well-seasoned, well-preheated cast iron skillet. And whenever it's well-seasoned, it'll just pop right out. So all I do is I spread that starter in, add some olive oil, a little salt. You could do herbs. I didn't today. I just did olive oil and salt, bake it. I always like to loosen it from the skillet to make sure nothing is sticking before adding the pizza sauce, the cheese, and then today I'm just doing salami. Sometimes I'll do other toppings. I'll do kind of fun toppings for me and Luke and I'll do goat cheese. Today I'm just making four pepperoni pizzas because I know that it'll be a really easy meal for dinner. Everybody will love it. It'll be easy to serve, easy to clean up and love some meals like that every once in a while. I did feed my starter way too much and I even knew it when I was doing it. I told Luke that morning, this is gonna bubble over. So it bubbled over into this dish and I'm just using what bubbled over as well because I don't wanna waste anything. But whenever you have a large family and you make this style of pizza, you're going to need a lot of starter for a pizza night. Well, I hope that you enjoy your meals today with as much enthusiasm as my two-year-old here. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new, go ahead and hit that subscribe. I make a new video like this every single week.